Okay, guys, another quick video. Um, somebody had emailed me. Evidently, I have this person shadow banned, but they're still watching videos. Um, but they had a couple of questions. Uh, one of the questions was um, about 40 years after Jesus ascended, the, the apostles celebrating the Sabbath. Nowhere, even in the writings of Josephus and a, and a couple of others who were watching this, nowhere does anybody say that they celebrated the Sabbath on Saturday or Sunday. Nowhere. And it's not in the Bible. In every instance it's mentioned, even in non-biblical writing, it says seventh day. They picked a day and gathered on. When you go look at how they decide when the month begins, because they don't have a Gregorian calendar. They used a, a lunar calendar. So the beginning of the year starts on the new moon, but every month starts on a full moon. When does the new moon and the full moon start? This phone's been ringing off the hook. Hold on, gotta take it. Sorry about that, guys. My dad gives my phone number out for everybody to call me, all his doctors and everything. So um, when they're calling, I've been giving them his phone number where they can call him. <clears throat> I'm tired of getting phone calls nonstop. Anyway. Um, when you go look at how they, they decide when the month is going to start, it can start, it, it all, it's all based on who sees the full moon. It's usually two Sanhedrin that are watching it, two witnesses. When they see it, the next morning starts the beginning of the month. Does that fall on the same day every single time? No. It can fall on anywhere from Monday to Monday any day so let's say they see it on a Tuesday well when's the seventh day after that Wednesday the following Wednesday that's the Sabbath the seventh day a lot of people haven't looked into this stuff people so adamantly want it to be one single day so they can say look see look at you you're not celebrating the Sabbath right um, actually I can point back at you and go look see you didn't do any research to learn exactly when it was being celebrated that's why in the Bible it says let no one judge you in food or drink Feasts, new moons, festivals, or Sabbaths. One man regards one day as different than another. One man regards every day the same. Both are correct. You learn these things when you read the Bible. You've got to read. I know she's probably watching, but you know what? If you're not willing to do the research and you're just going to link me to articles from other people that you've gotten your understanding from and you're not going to do your own research you will never have any greater understanding than what you have right now you must go read the bible for yourself you cannot be a lazy christian you cannot trust what other people say you go read it now i've had people tell me well you want us to trust what you say i never say that i always tell you not to trust what i say so eh, wrong again y'all just getting check marks all off the list Go read the scriptures. Do your own. It's literally a Google search and you can find this information. It's easy. So there should be no confusion about this. When is the Sabbath? Pick a day. Whatever day you celebrate the Sabbath. Now they did it back then according to a ritual, according to the letter of the law. Now that Christ has ascended, we don't do it by the letter of the law. The Bible says that. I've covered it just in the last couple of days. Now, the other thing they had brought up <clears throat> was about the commandments. And they brought up 1 Corinthians 7.19. This was in a separate email. 1 Corinthians 7.19 says, For neither circumcision counts for anything, nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God. And they're like, well, how do you explain this? Okay, how do you explain this? And I asked them, what are the commandments of God? Go read 1 John and get back, get back to me with what you find. We're going to cover it in this video. We're actually going to cover 1 John 3, 1 John 4, 1 John 5, and 3 John 1 as a little special added thing on the end. So, what are the commandments of God? Well, when you go into the Old Testament and look up the commandments of God, it's the original Ten Commandments. When Christ died and paid for the sins of the world, because that was what was going to be the atonement originally, Christ died and paid for the sins of the world and ascended, it changed. There is a new covenant there's a new covenant that doesn't have the law interjected into it. The law it was moved aside and nailed to the cross. It's in scripture. you got to go read it. So what commandments is he referring to here? 
Well, when you read in context, only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is my rule in all the churches. That's an interesting statement. Well, why would it not be just one life across the board like it used to be under the law? Only let each person lead the life that the Lord has assigned to him. So the life that you're in is the life you're to lead. That's what you were given. I did a video yesterday about be happy, be content with what you have. There's a reason why the Bible says that. Guys, all this stuff connects and it all, it all leads together and links together. And look at the commentary over here on the right, serving God in your calling. be interesting to read through that so if there was just one life why wouldn't it have said only let each person lead the life that God has assigned to all but it doesn't say that <clears throat> that the Lord has assigned to him the individual person not everybody will walk the same walk but all serve the same God our walk doesn't dictate who we are or, or how much of a believer we are because everybody does something a little different. Some people are street preachers. Some people are YouTube preachers. Some people do gospel tracts. Everybody does something a little different. Was anyone at the time of his call already circumcised? Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone at the time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. What is he saying here? Is he talking about the physical change? Because you can't reattach the foreskin. That's what circumcision was back then. Cut the foreskin off. That was a mark. Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. How can you do that? You can't reattach the foreskin. How would you change that? You can't. Was anyone at that time of his calling uncircumcised let him not seek circumcision there's another hidden meaning in here was anyone at the time of his call already under law let him not seek to remove the marks of the law was anyone at his time of his call not under law let him not seek the law because that was the mark of the law was circumcision that was the mark that indicated you were part of that because back then nobody nobody was circumcised Till that happened. Abraham, go read about Abraham. He didn't get circumcised until 14 years after God had talked to him and gave him the promise. It's all in the Bible. But you have to do research. You have to read to see these things. So, verse 19, for neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision. So what is he saying? If he, if he was hinting at law up here, wouldn't he be hinting at it here? For neither, no law, counts for anything, nor law, or sorry, neither law counts for anything, nor no law, but keeping the commandments of God. The Ten Commandments are part of the law. So with deductive reasoning, we can think, okay, well, he's not talking about the Ten Commandments here, obviously. And I've covered this in tons of videos. In fact, in 1 Corinthians, I forget what chapter it is, I think it's 5, it says that this is the law of death. This is the ministry of condemnation and death. The Ten Commandments. It literally says that. So, is he talking about the Ten Commandments? Is he talking about the law? No, absolutely not. And we're going to prove that with just a couple of scriptures. But there's a whole bunch of them that prove this. Now, we can keep reading more in context. Each one should remain in the condition in which he was called. Now, when you go back and read in Acts and see how some people were still under law, doing things of the law, going along with traditions, and some weren't. Some of the apostles stayed into it, and some didn't. This is what he's referring to. If you get saved, and you know that doing that stuff isn't going to save you, but you keep some of those aspects of it, it's okay. If you were already in that. That's the difference. Some people want to get go into that. He's telling you not to do that. If you weren't already there, don't do it. Stay out of it. Were you a bondservant when called? Do not be concerned about it. 
But if you can gain your freedom, avail yourself of the opportunity. For he, he who was called in the Lord as a bondservant is a freed man of the Lord. Likewise, he who was free when called is a bondservant of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become bondservants of men. He's telling people this so they don't end up causing problems for themselves after being saved. So brothers, in whatever condition each was called, let, there let him remain with God. This one section right here is extremely important. Now, when you go and look at the Jews that become saved, the Messianics, what do you see them do in their lives? They still observe much of what the law says, the feasts and the holidays. They stayed where they were. Christians should not, regular Gentile Christians, should not be engaging in those things. Now, if you want to, go for it. Go into prayer and talk to the Lord about it. But we should not be trying to put ourselves under something we weren't given. Because you know what that ends up doing? You end up putting yourself as a bondservant to that law and not to God. You can't serve two masters. So what he's telling here is in order to keep your situation from getting bad for you, like people who are bondservants to someone else and then becoming saved, he says, don't make yourself free because of that. Oh, I'm, I'm free now. I don't have to be your bondservant anymore. Fulfill your obligations. Stay in, stay where you are. Verse 24, so brothers, in whatever condition each was called, let there let him remain with God. This whole chapter actually needs to be read in its entirety because there's a lot of information in here that reiterates what this particular sec section is talking about. And there actually is serving God in your calling is, is uh, highlighted over here in the commentary. It is important to understand all these things in context. Now we're going to put this in context, the original statement we were talking about, commandments of God. Is this talking about the Ten Commandments or is it talking about something else? Clearly, reading it in context, it's not talking about the Ten Commandments. And we can prove that in 1 John 3.19. In 1 John, starting in verse 19, 1 John 3, By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. Reassure our heart before him. This is our indicator to us personally. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, if your heart does not condemn us, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Now, if you stop right there, see, I told you it's Ten Commandments. This is why you have to read in context. Because the very next verse, he explains what commandments we are to keep. And this is the, his commandment. That we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God. There's that statement, keeps his commandments. Abides in God and God in him. And th by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. This couldn't be any clearer. Yet people still miss it because they so desperately want to be self-validated. But this isn't all. There's more. Now we're going to go to 1 John 4.21. <clears throat> And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. It's the commandment of love. It's not no longer the Ten Commandments. Let's read this in context. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe that the love that God has for us, God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God keeping the commandments, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. It's not referring to the Ten Commandments and being righteous that way. It's about walking in faith and love and God counting that as righteousness to us. And it's not even our righteousness, it's Christ's righteousness. 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. So why are you guys fearing violating the Ten Commandments? It's right here on the screen. There is no fear in love. That's why he's telling you to walk in the commandment of love. But perfect, but perfect fear casts out, perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. If you're fearing condemnation and punishment, the things that it says we no longer have, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You're letting aspects of the law into your faith. Don't do that. We love because he first loved us. David Benjamin did a, a video series on this. Talking about it's not our love, it's Christ's love in us. We don't love. We love because he first loved us. He was right, and he got tore apart for that. Actually, other channels sent people to harass him. Blaming us for that, but yet they're the ones doing it. But he's right. This verse proves he's right. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. Now, you can deny that you're showing hate, but if you're coming after your brothers and sisters with condemnation, using scripture as a weapon against them when you don't even know what the scriptures mean, that's hate. Because you're doing it with indignation. For he who does not love his brother whom he has, not, who he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. If you can't show love here, how can you be expected to show any love there? And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. If you don't have love in every form, that's a problem. It's okay to get mad. It's okay to get upset. We can have a righteous indignation about things, but we still love the person. I still love all those people over there in that camp that are doing those things and saying those things, but I hate what they do. And it is extremely important that they learn this and get out of that stuff. Now, you can read the commentary on this, and it gives you even more answers on that, but I'm going to try to keep this video kind of short. Now, let's go to 1 John 5, 1. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. Now, I've had people tell me, well, you're not my brother because you don't believe the Ten Commandments are what we should follow. I believe what the Bible says, and it doesn't say it's the Ten Commandments. We're, we're gonna, again, we're going to prove this with yet another set of scriptures. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God to and obey His commandments. Now, if you stop right there, Look, it's the Ten Commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. There's that statement. And His commandments are not burdensome. If you stop right there, you say, okay, well, that's it. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith, not our obedience. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? We see love and belief being presented here as the commandments. I think there was another section in here. It talks about the sin of unbelief further down. Okay, so what are the commandments we're supposed to follow? Now, this isn't even all the scriptures. There's more than this. I thought there were some. Oh, yeah, here it is in uh, 2 John 1. I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. This is actually one Watchwoman 65 found. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we've had from the beginning, that we love one another. Listen closely, and this is love. We're going to prove it again, that we walk according to his commandments. If you stop right there, which I've seen people do, they don't ever read further past that, that we walk according to his commandments. 
And what's dumb is, is that when they quote this scripture, they even copy a little semicolon there. But you have to keep reading to get the whole context. But they stop there because the rest of the, of the thing proves them wrong. That it's not the Ten Commandments. This is the commandment. Just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is a deceiver and the Antichrist. Wait a minute, Mr. Christian. What commandment was he talking about? I don't know. What was it? Let's go back up. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. What commandment? Love, right here. It says it in the next verse up. Context. You walk in love. Right here. So that you should walk in it. Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. What did Christ teach? Love. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. For whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. So the person that this video is, is pointed at, that emailed me last night or yesterday, that's talking about you. Right here, verse 10 and 11. Because you're not bringing the teaching of love. You're bringing the teaching of the ministry of death. Was it 1 Corinthians 3 or 1 Corinthians 5? I forget where it was at now. I don't remember where it was at now. And even in 3, John, there's scripture. Wait, I missed one. 1 John, I thought there was one I missed. 1 John 5, 1. Did I cover that one? Nope, I already covered that one. Okay, so clearly we've proven that it's not the Ten Commandments that this is talking about. It's not the Ten Commandments that 1 Corinthians is talking about. It is the commandment of love and faith. If you don't have faith and love, you've got nothing. You can do all the Ten Commandments you want, but if you don't have love and faith, you've got nothing. Now, 3 John 1, 5. Now, this is for you specifically. And this isn't about that. This is about something else. Listen to what this says. Beloved, it is a faithful thing for you, faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers, strangers as they are, who testify to your love before the church, you will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God. For they have gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Now, when you see this in the New Testament, you have to think about it. It's not actually the Gentiles. It's those who are, un, are not in the faith anymore. Therefore, we ought to support people like these that we may be fellow workers for the truth. I have written something to the church, but listen closely to what this is saying here. But Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us and not content with that. He refuses to welcome the brothers and also stops those who want who want to and puts them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is, is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. 
Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself. We also add our testimony, and you know our testimony is true. If you're putting yourself first because you think you're better than other Christians because you fulfill the Ten Commandments, number one, you're not first. And you're not above any other Christian. We're all the same in Christ. Number two, and which actually could be right along parallel with number one, you're not fulfilling the Ten Commandments. Your thoughts betray you. Your thoughts violate the Ten Commandments. Jesus said that. Now, I want to do one thing. I want to go back to 1 Corinthians 7. And I want to show you something. 1 Corinthians seven nineteen, which is the verse we started with. This was the verse in question in the email. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but keeping the commandments of God. Watch this. When we go into the Greek... The keeping. Keeping the commandments of God. What does that say? A watching. That is figuratively observance. Or concretely a prison. Hold. That's not a verb. That's not an action. That's not a doing. People get this misunderstanding that most of the time... Now, in the Old Testament, it was an action. It was a verb doing but it's not here why is it not here well because when you become saved after jesus ascended you become saved the law and the commandments are written on your heart remember that scripture they're written on your heart you are keeping them but it's in a figurative sense not in a physical sense again we have to keep reiterating it's not about what we're doing in the flesh anymore it's spiritual but if you don't study, you don't know these things. If you don't read, you don't know these things. You don't see these things or learn these things. But it's right there. That keeping the commandments of God, the keeping of the commandments of God, the, the, the scripture in question where they were saying, oh, you've got to keep the Ten Commandments. Well, how and what commandments? Well, evidently it's not... It's not... Figure, it's, I mean, it's not... a. Literally. It's figuratively. So we can prove anything, any argument they have, we can prove it wrong. Just with simple free tools you can download online. The Greek tells us exactly what this is talking about. You're keeping them here. So all of you trying to justify yourselves by keeping the Ten Commandments, you're trying to justify the flesh. The flesh has been dealt with already. Christ did it on the cross. It's done. Sin was imprisoned in the flesh. Now there's a separation between the outer man and the inner man. And it's the inner man that's pure and born again, not the outer man. If the outer man was going to be born again, your body would be completely changed when you became indwelt with the Holy Spirit. Too many phone calls. So anyway, guys, download eSword. Do your own studies on this. Look into this yourself and see what you can find. Hello. Please leave a message after the tone. There we go. See what you can find. Because when you look into it and do just simple cursory... I'm no good at this stuff. Simple cursory studies into this stuff, you can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt what it's talking about. If this word, keeping of the commandments is a figurative term, not a action, not a verb. That should tell you that it's not you actually keeping the Ten Commandments. It's a figurative observance. It says it right there. That is figuratively observance. It's something you do spiritually in your heart. So, this is why we read, this is why we study, this is why we answer questions. If you have questions like this, whether you agree with me or don't agree with me or like me or don't like me, please email me. I'll do everything I can to address it. But when I address it, I'm going to address it with Scripture. And I'm going to address it as much as I possibly can with Scripture to prove what it's actually saying. Now, whether you like the answer you get or not, it's not my concern. But Scripture is truth and Scripture is the authority. And that's what I'm going to go by. So, again... 
If you're trying to physically follow the Ten Commandments, you are condemning yourself to be judged by the law. You violate it in one point, you violate every bit of it. And what's the penalty for that? Death for eternity. You need to understand the ramifications of what you're doing. They are dire. You are condemning yourself. Repent, turn away, change your mind about this, and go and read instead of listening to other people. Other people are going to tell you what their opinion is. You ever watch their video and they got a 45 minute to an hour and a half long video and they cover two or three scriptures, but the rest of it is just them commentary? What do you get from me? How much scripture did I share with you guys? Let's see, it was um, 1 Corinthians 7, 19. 1 John 3, 19, I shared, I think, eight scriptures on that one. 1 John 4, 21, I shared eight or nine scriptures on that one. 1 John 5, 1, I shared seven scriptures on that one, I think, and 3 John 1, 5, that was another six or seven scriptures. I'm not going to give you my opinion. I'm not going to give you one or two scriptures and then talk the rest of the time. I'm going to give you what the Bible says about that kind of stuff. Not one or two, 10, 15, 20, 30 scriptures. We're going to prove this. And if you're still not convinced, that's your problem. You need to go and you need to read this for yourself. Stop listening to other people who are lying to you. I love you guys. I bless every one of you in Jesus' name. I pray you guys get this. I pray this strikes a chord with people so that they will see and go, okay, that is what the Bible says. Because that's the authority. Not me, not you, not no one else. And look, if you still want to, I'm not telling you not to do anything. If you still want to go follow the Ten Commandments in your flesh, thinking that you're doing something good, go ahead. When you stand there on that day and you have to give an account of this stuff, you can't say, I didn't know. Because you've got watchmen out here that are preaching this to you and showing you this on the screen. It's not like we're making it up. It's right there. And every bit of it is verifiable. If you're willing to put a little effort into it and learn something. So, do your own research. Do your own reading. And you'll see exactly what we see. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video.